The astral plane, also called the astral world, is a plane of existence postulated by classical, particularly Neoplatonic, medieval, oriental, and esoteric philosophies and mystery religions. It is the world of the celestial spheres, crossed by the soul and its astral body on the way to being born and after death, and is generally believed to be populated by angels, spirits or other immaterial beings. In the late 19th and early 20th century the term was popularized by theosophy and neo-Rosicrucianism. Another view holds that the astral plane or world, rather than being some kind of boundary area crossed by the soul, is the entirety of spirit existence or spirit worlds to which those who die on earth go, and where they live out their non-physical lives. Some writers conflate this realm with heaven or paradise or union with God itself and others do not. P. Yogananda wrote an autobiography of a yogi, The Astral Universe is hundreds of times larger than the material universe. Many astral planets, teeming with astral beings. P.416 When Alice Bailey writes of seeing masters upon the inner spiritual planes work with Christ and the planetary hierarchy she refers to a vision she had of the unseen astral realm that these and countless other beings inhabit. Christ being in that realm, it is hard to construe it as a non-heaven. The Barzak, Olam Mythal or Intermediate World in Islam, and the world of Yetzira in Lurianic Kabbalah are related concepts. Mormonism, not fitting into the above categories of classical, medieval, oriental, Mystery religion believes we die and go to either paradise or a type of spirit prison and remain there until the eventual resurrection and judgment. Hence Mormons don't use the word astral but essentially describe an astral realm. According to occult teachings the astral plane can be visited consciously through astral projection, meditation and mantra, near-death experience, lucid dreaming, or other means. Individuals that are trained in the use of the astral vehicle can separate their consciousness and the astral vehicle from the physical body at will. In early theosophical literature the term astral may refer to the other. Later theosophical authors such as Annie Besant and C.W. Leadbeater make the astral finer than the etheric plane but denser than the mental plane. In order to create a unified view of seven bodies and remove earlier Sanskrit terms, an etheric plane was introduced and the term astral body was used to replace the former Kamarupa, sometimes termed the body of emotion, illusion or desire. According to Max Heindel's Rosicrucian writings, desire stuff may be described as a type of force matter, in incessant motion, responsive to the slightest feeling. The desire world is also said to be the abode of the dead for some time subsequent to death. It is also the home of the archangels. In the higher regions of the desire world thoughts take a definite form and color perceptible to all, all is light and there is but one long day. In his book Autobiography of a Yogi, Paramhansa Yogananda provides details about the astral planes learned from his guru. Yogananda claims that nearly all individuals enter the astral planes after death. There they work out the seeds of past karma through astral incarnations or, if their karma requires, they return to earthly incarnations for further refinement. Once an individual has attained the meditative state of Nirvikalpa Samadhi in an earthly or astral incarnation, the soul may progress upward to the illumined astral planet of Hiranyaloka. After this transitional stage, the soul may then move upward to the more subtle causal spheres where many more incarnations allow them to further refine before final unification. Astral projection author Robert Bruce describes the astral as seven planes that take the form of planar surfaces when approached from a distance, separated by immense colored buffer zones. These planes are endlessly repeating ruled Cartesian grids, tiled with a single signature pattern that is different for each plane. Higher planes have bright, colorful patterns, whereas lower planes appear far duller. Every detail of these patterns acts as a consistent portal to a different kingdom inside the plane, which itself comprises many separate realms. Bruce notes that the astral may also be entered by means of long tubes that bear visual similarity to these planes, 
and conjectures that the grids and tubes are in fact the same structures approached from a different perceptual angle.